Hey everyone, and welcome back. The hard part is finished. Right here I have my two straight modules, my two feet by four feet. And then here I have three regular corner modules. And here I have my corner module with the straight side there that will go to a turnout and that will either be just a yard or a staging area. Now I have a choice. I can put these modules together and set up my track in, in such a way that I want to. But if I put track on these and say I come out of one corner here and go into the other corner over here or into the straight there or whatever, that means the modules are stuck in the exact same orientation every time. So I'm going to do something that will allow me to interchange modules. And I will be back with you on that in just a second. Hey everybody. Just had to be a little goofy there for a minute. Uh, I'm going to have a, have a little uh, confession right here. Um, Sometimes, even the best of us, with, with our, our best intentions, sometimes we make horrible mistakes. So, today I'm going to show you one of mine. Thankfully, y'all didn't have to put up with it, so that's good. But, uh, I, just, I just want to put it out there for you and clear the air. We're going to call this episode, Coffee and Model Railroading and John's Confession. Well, we're going to do some construction in here, too. But anyhow, here we are. All right. Remember me telling you that if someday I have a model railroad club or, or whatever, that I would like to have it set up so that if members bring modules, they can set them up in the layout and run them. And if they don't, that's fine too. Um, in any organization, there's probably 20% of the people who do. 80% of the people who are usually just there. Now, of that 80%, every once in a while, you're going to get someone who wants to participate in some event or some show or whatever. So, obviously, you don't ever want to exclude them. And this is where this jig is going to come in really handy. Now, before I go too much farther, I'm going to say that I decided to run 8 inches from the front of the modules. That way if we have trains running and someone has some cars that have some poor wheels or they have a trip pin on the couplers that is hanging low and it catches on something and it derails, it's going to fall on the front of the railroad and not on the ground. So to set it up so that you can use modules of course, you've got to have jigs. Well, I built this beautiful jig right here. I built it so that you could set it in on one side of the module and the other, and then the module would slide into this side. And I got my track set up and all that good stuff. And then I said, oh my gosh, did I ever boo-boo. This, if you take this module and set it here, so it lines up with this track here. And you take this module and you set it here so it lines up with this track here. Well, you take the jig off and you bring the modules together. There's absolutely no guarantee that uh, the two track sections would line up. I mean, if I did a 100% job making this jig, then yes, it would. But otherwise, no. So... Back to square one. I had to start all over. So let me move this out of the way. All 
this is what I should have done right from the get-go. Two, two jigs. Now this is just a simple jig. It's got the same pieces in it that I use on the ends of the modules. And then in between, I just put a piece of wood. Uh, there's no specific size that you need for that. Uh, it can be any size. Uh, it just so happens these ones are four and a half, so the overall is uh, five and a quarter. And then when you put the two together, it's just ten and a half. Anyways, these jigs, they line up like so. So, you take, you set this jig on this end of this module, set this jig on the other end of the same module, and then when you bring the next module over and line them up, in theory, they would line right up perfectly. So, anyways, there's John's confession for you today. I didn't show you building these, uh, but I mean, it's, it's pretty doggone simple. You just, you, just put them, you just put them together, the outside goes on the outside, and you just glue it, nail it, just like anything else we've done. And, and again, I did the same 8-inch track center on this, and I'll show you how I, how I will go ahead and, and put the plywood on and all that good stuff. But first thing, before we get to doing the track, and so with that, we're going to have some way to keep these th things together. So, I came up with this. These are sash locks. And they're designed to go on top of a window. When you have windows that slide up and down, they're designed to lock the two windows together, keep them good and tight. So, I'm hoping on the side of the module, these things will work good. So, all right. Now, I'll have to reposition you so that you can watch me build them, uh, putting these sash locks on. Okay, here we are. Then anyway, we've got the sash lock. I got them out of the package and there they are laid out. So basically, this one goes on this side. Here, let's just do it right here. That goes on that side. This, this swings up onto it and then this cam locks are, locks are tight. So, I don't want anything sticking out from anywhere, so I, I positioned that one so it would be flush with the flush or a little bit short of the front of the jig and consequently the modules. So, I did that. I determined that the whole center on this was was one and a half. So I'm I of course I went to my two inch center mark, went back three quarters, three quarters this way, drilled two pilot holes. And they would go in like that. You take a screw. You put her in like so. So anyways, um, I started this channel five years ago. Um, I love doing model railroad stuff. And along the, along the way, I've learned a little bit here and there. Some of it good, some of it bad. But I decided it would be kind of cool to do a YouTube channel and, and show you some of the uh, stuff that I've learned. Uh, the very first one I did, I remember five years ago now, was cloud paint with a little six inch roller. And, and uh, that was something that, it was one of those things, that particular method for doing cloud painting with that six inch roller, it was, it was just a totally accidental thing. I just happened on how it worked and, and so I ended up, I made my first video. So anyways, this side here is one and three quarter inch hole spacing. And I went and fiddled with this thing and lined her all up like so. And then I did the cam lock like so. And I determined to get about the right amount of pressure on this thing. I had to come in 15 sixteenths from the front of the jig. And because these are one and, th one and three quarters apart, I had to go 15 sixteenths each side of the center line. So 
let's go ahead I'll get a screw started in there so having said that um, I like showing you guys some of the things I've learned along the way and you know how it is with the algorithm on YouTube if you happen to watch a video like say for instance it shows somebody making trees well all of a sudden the you the the algorithm will pull up a whole bunch of other suggestions for people who are doing the same thing and you might have two people doing the making trees the exact same way but if you watch those videos uh, most of them, especially if you watch them all the way through, they might have some tipper technique that they use, which you think, which really, which really hits home for you. And you think, oh my gosh, that is a really cool way of doing that. I want to try it. Well, that's kind of, I feel the same way about my videos. Hopefully I inspire you guys to want to try it. And along the way down the road if i happen to make a little bit of money off the end of it so that'd be great if not here i am but anyway all right got the two screwed in now i've got my cam lock, cam lock here or sash lock here i can put it in here oh i did that one good hey everyone just wanted to do something good look at look at how tight that holds Anyways, when you're, when you're easy to come apart, when you're transporting these things, there's nothing that is going to stick out there because I'm always setting it so it's going to hang down. So there's nothing sticking out there that's going to get destroyed or broke. You'd have to be pretty rough to break these. There we go. You just take, put your modules together, slide your thing on, lock her in place. What do you think of that? All right. So that does that for this one. Um, I guess on the next video, um, we will start uh, showing you how, I, how I'm doing the track and my jig and stuff. And I have a really neat little product I want to show you as well. So thank you all for watching. If you found this helpful, please, please share it, like it. And if you aren't subscribed already, please do so. Maybe someday down the road, I can make a little money off these videos. So, have a good one, y'all.